Welcome everyone to episode 9 of Anuk WW's Polymathcast. Brought to you by Anuk WW himself, me. <laughs> uh, so uh, today guys, I have a special guest, a very special guest. I always have a special guest. And on screen right now is Mr. Manju Fernando. You're on screen, Mr. Manju. Good evening, Anuk. Thank you for having me. <laughs> It's a um, pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Manju. Uh, so guys, Mr. Manju is actually one of my mentors and he's honestly one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. He's uh, one of Sri Lanka's top most polymaths and he is an absolute radical, revolutionary thinker, 100%. And it's always a pleasure to be, you know, just to have him, just to be around him and have a chat with him. And we meet up like what, Mr. Manju, like once every, what, three, four months, I think? Uh, that's right. That's and, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we always have an interesting chat. Always, always. Yes. And uh, I was, uh, so Mr. Manju and I have known each other for six years, I want to say now, Mr. Manju, is that right? Yeah, it's about right. And uh, we, 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 in a moment, we'll get to how we met, as always, uh, since everyone needs to know how <laughs> I met all my guests. Uh, but what I wanted to say is that I've always enjoyed Mr. Manju's talks always because I, i i've always whenever i go into whenever i go to meet mr manju i've always gone in um with all these questions right and then i leave with even more questions <laughs> 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 no no i'm joking i'm joking um i leave with a lot of answers actually also a lot of questions uh but with a lot of answers and a different perspective and i was and and the last time i met mr manju we had pizza And I told Mr. Manju, um, why don't you come on the podcast? And he's like, not yet. I'll, I'll, I'll show up soon, right? <laughs> Maybe when you turn 30. So uh, I turned 30 a few days ago. And who would I have but Mr. Manju as my first guest as a 30-year-old? <laughs> so, Mr. Manju, here we go. How do we meet? Uh, well, I was doing some work for uh, one of the blue chip companies. Uh, and uh, you were part of the team there. Indeed, I was. Yes, and uh, <laughs> uh, I, well, it was, a, I think, an entrenched problem that we were going to look at and see whether we could solve. And uh, I'm happy to say that we did. Indeed. So that's, that's <laughs> really how we met initially. And uh, from there on, we've been, uh, I think, learning lots of stuff from each other and enjoying each other's company. You've learned a lot from me? Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Life's complete now. <laughs> like, for example, what not to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, there is some truth to that. Yeah, but, uh, no, 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 I'm being serious. Not, not really that. But there's so many, so many uh, facets to um, people I like to be with. Uh, and that's important. And... Uh, uh, You're someone I could bounce my thoughts off as well. And uh, I think that is why we do, do click. That is true. That is true. It's, it's one of the reasons why I wanted you as my mentor as well. One of my mentors. And uh, we're going to go more into detail about that um, in, uh, in a short while actually. Uh, but let's start it off with uh, something, that's something that I think a lot of people would love to know about. Which is... What kind of people would you look for if you were, you know, the leader of a team? Which, of course, you are. You have your own consulting company, as do I. Of course, yours is a lot more, um, lot more revolutionary than mine is. Because the mind behind it is a revolutionary. <laughs> uh, but, Mr. Manju, if you were looking, if you were a boss, uh, uh, what, what kind of personalities would you like to have on your team? Uh, I would generally like people who are curious and uh, who have... Uh, the strength of courage to think even or come up with a solution without fearing too much about whether they what they bring to the table is right or wrong so those are the people that i would really like to work with uh, because basically solution providers right so And you wouldn't care if they had a degree or not no their education really would not matter to me at all mm, why is that mr manju because it doesn't matter I've seen people <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with no qualifications, so-called, uh, 
who are absolutely brilliant and i've seen many who are you know very highly qualified professors so on and so forth who are not so i don't think uh, uh, a qualification plays a part at least not not for me i think this is very important to, to note as well i uh, and i would have to agree with you as well mr manjo i think that a lot of people who i've met uh who some of the most brilliant people i've met actually are people that you know don't have um, a traditional degree education is because sometimes they just didn't have the means to uh, get one at the time and and they just chose to learn through the streets basically you know get get the real education of the world and um, i've always found that not always but a lot of the time i found that those are the kind of people who i have a lot of um learnings from uh, i gain a lot of new perspectives from them because they never actually because their mind is more freestyle right they they weren't you know in that style of uh, that university style of thinking of, which is like you know structured which is structured you know you, you as you said mr manju um before the podcast started like you know you're learning from the teachings of some brilliant man and then you take it for what it is yes or no and then you kind of base your thoughts on and you you build you build your thought processes on the foundation set by someone else which is not a bad thing but it also kind of might restrict you if you don't free your mind as well so i find that the people who don't have degrees are people who are a lot more abstract in their thinking and there's a lot of perspectives that you can gain from talking to them especially if you have an open mind to listen to them well it's not whether you have a degree or you don't have a degree that really matters mm. uh, i mean you can be a professor and still have a brilliant mind inquisitive mind be open to ideas and you could not have any qualifications at all and still have that same mind mm. so that really is not the case of whether you have a you know recognized qualification or not that that's mm. not important uh, the thinking is what is important and also uh, see if you look at how the world has developed or moved ahead it's always due to people challenging the accepted norm i think that's very right. important actually mr man so to challenge the accepted norm that means you have not accepted that as the norm <laughs> right otherwise how are you why are you challenging it right so let's say the world is flat for example mm mm-hmm. if somebody didn't ta- challenge that then probably the world would still be flat <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, it's it's uh, i think uh, a few people like that in the world mm-hmm. who really make a difference and uh, uh, of course you need uh free thinkers as well as people who then use those thoughts and add work on them and build something better or move move the ball further down the field right so a lot of skills are important but uh, from my perspective from a perspective of a free thinker uh, i don't think uh, uh, education is important or not important it depends on the person that you are I think this is very important as well. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um but again like you said to be a free thinker you need to do you think it can be taught or do you think it's just something that's in it? No. Thought. <laughs> well, uh it, it, I don't think some things can be taught. It's like uh you know how do you teach a person to have an open mind? uh you can maybe lead by example in some cases and if they are naturally are they are naturally open minded to begin with they can move down that road but uh it's it's like asking some teaching someone to draw okay right uh you know to be a great artist you need to have that skill as well mm-hmm. and maybe the what you learn or the skills that you learn from others will help you right but if you don't have that natural talent or the natural thinking or the open mindedness 
it cannot be thought right it can be improved upon but uh, i don't think it can be just thought mm, what if mr manju you have people around you who who kind of show you their way of thinking what if okay so so for example like say you're not someone who is a free thinker by nature but you hang around people who like to who like to just question everything that they see and then by association you also start questioning it um what do you think if someone goes down that path of just hang around similar people that they'll also start um getting that mindset into their system or obviously even if they do the way that i see it is that even if they do it will take them some time to understand the nuances and the subtleties of like people who like to think like to think at that level there are little tweaks that each pe- each person has their own intricacies and i think that might take some time but the way that i see it mr manju is that if you hang around people you can also kind of get it innately yourself i think you can learn it I, that's what i think i, I yes is something you can build on mm. if you have the seed within you if you have the seed within you yeah meaning uh, uh the question that you ask if you hang around people that you know know things differently to what you know mm-hmm. uh would that help you would that give you different ideas or different view points yes it would because you are being there with that thought in you already you're looking for it ah oh, that's actually a fair point yes, yes. if yes. you're not looking for it you're not going to benefit at all so uh, uh another day uh, i think uh so called being a, uh how we, we try to label people like intellectuals or you know uh, <laughs> things like that but i don't think these are very important there is a uh things that have come through society it's like uh, you know okay you have a degree you don't have a degree uh, you're from a good family or you're not from a good family these are various blocks that have been created and people find it easier to put a person in a in one of these blocks right uh, but uh, in reality i think for me what is important is uh, i'm still trying to improve and get there but uh, i think being kind i think that would be the, the first thing mm um, working hard obviously and uh, most importantly if you are thinking about happiness uh to be happy with little or learn to be happy with little but what does little mean mr manju that's my question that the little is what you already have which could actually then be a lot relatively correct <laughs> <laughs> because uh i think we discussed this before the podcast started mm-hmm. you know uh, when you when you chase a goal uh, it is uh, sometimes the thrill of the chase that is really important or if you go to uh, destination mm-hmm. it is not the destination that's important it's a journey you know if and if you don't uh, look at the journey you would probably miss a lot of many things but again mr manju how do you uh, like yes it's true that the journey is what matters but when you're going on the journey mm-hmm. how how do you like just stop and just pause and take a look around and just enjoy and just enjoy what you see like how how do you do that how do you ride a bicycle by riding it correct <laughs> <laughs> right but then, but then no but then like the journey right how okay so i'll rephrase what i just said um when you're going through your journey how is it that you can stay focused on your journey without all the other inputs all the other external inputs influencing you uh you really don't focus on a journey you focus on a you focus on a destination so that's what i meant If right. you focus on a destination you miss the experience of the journey the, the journey is something that you know let's say you're walking from here to the supermarket right. and it rains okay and you get wet mm-hmm. right getting wet is not the goal right you're going to the supermarket but you got wet so getting wet is part of the journey 
that's the experience that you had while going there no no 100% and, I, and, I, and that that is it's not something you start out from home saying that i want to get wet while i'm going to the supermarket <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, it, 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 don't make it a goal that's what i'm saying you know you have your goals but enjoy the journey that's that's important but okay especially in this day and age mr manju right uh, you have a bunch of people who have reached a destination so for example right uh, on social media say okay actually no before i get there so say i want to go from here to 5 kilometers up the road mm. right but i'm also on social media and literally millions of people have made that trek from here to 5 5 kilometers up the road but i haven't mm. so now inherently i'm now focused on the destination and not the journey how do you change that why are you going there meaning what to the destination or yeah, the, 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 the particular goal that you want to go 5 kilometers what was the reason uh, the reasons because i feel like i need to do that in order to achieve happiness or to feel like i have i have hit some level of my self worth at least the self worth that i'm looking for at this stage in my life i need to get to that destination in order to achieve that goal yeah. that's something you will never achieve <laughs> not because of anything because you will find that when you get there it's moved further away or what you expected is not there so uh, the the destination and the journey is within you anuk no i i, I know that mr manju yeah. but like how like my question is how do you keep focus of that like it's not an easy thing to do right like when you're like when you're in the middle of running through uh, this race that you're going through it's it's so difficult to just take a look around and just take a look at your surroundings you just want to go to that destination that's my point mr yeah, that's true that's true i mean but then you need to relax and uh, change course it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a fair uh, point actually mr manju that is a fair you know, point if you look at okay let's say you want to make a billion dollars right right so you think that's going to bring bring you happiness I think right. that when you are at the stage in life that you are at when you don't have that billion yeah. you do believe that it'll give you a billion because you believe that all the things that you want to do in life you can do with that billion correct yes so but once you have a billion that that happiness may not be there yeah fair enough fair right. so, like, so, yeah. so 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 am i about to buy why, why why chase behind a carrot that is always moving away from you you know you're the one who's creating this uh, these goals but wouldn't you have to mr manju in order to you know feel like your life is fulfilled like like you're living a fulfilled life wouldn't you want to have goals no hmm i think you do things uh the three things that i mentioned you know be kind work hard and uh, keep it simple i think if you are doing that then the other things that you do uh uh sort of uh, not that important isn't it subjective though mr manju like not surely really. cuz like say for example right mm. say say i want to go traveling mm. right i i um, and for example i want to go to i don't know colombia mm. and do the fandango fine <laughs> i'm just saying right, random things right or uh go to mombasa and have some really good tea which would be funny cuz ceylon tea is of course ceylon tea right uh but mombasa tea is amazing as well and um or else would you like just just go to europe and just look at the mediterranean right just enjoy the mediterranean culture the food go to italy um uh, marvel at renaissance works uh you know all these things right i and say i also want to drive a ferrari right and live in like i don't know a, a like a like a 10 story mansion right it, it, these are all things i might want to do reality I, i'm I not saying don't do it yeah i'm just saying don't make it your life's goal to do it but what if that's something that would give me happiness what if what if those are the kind of things i want to do like i personally it doesn't have to be anyone else in the world it's just me personally i would love i would love to do that and i believe that would give me happiness like it being I kind think, working hard yeah, if, like, if you really want to do it i don't think you'll be asking questions you'll just set out to do, go do it right <laughs> asking you know okay I, i want a ferrari how shall i do it or should i have a ferrari that means it's not really your passion you're not not sure so right. if you want something go work for it and get it that's all 
right <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just talking about it and you know thinking beforehand how do i do it step by step that those sort of things uh, it complicates life i see i see mr manju and uh, and, and and uh, you, you know uh, see let's say you want to get a ferrari okay. once you are 90 years old if you get a ferrari mm mm-hmm. versus if you get one now right the way you're going to enjoy is going to be very different yeah for example i won't be able to drive <laughs> yeah, the car right. when i'm 90 exactly <laughs> exactly exactly so do things when you can yeah but 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 he's right. the thing there's the high probability that i'd be able to have the means to buy the ferrari when i'm 90 if i'm alive at that time yeah. right as opposed to now There is that that could be <laughs> but uh, if you are really interested maybe hire one drive around i mean you can easily get uh, get a drive of uh, ferrari in singapore or you know you over here in sri lanka right you know get get the, get the experience if you think this is something that you really want to do go just do it right it's uh, i think uh, thinking about something too much won't get you there Actually, that's true. That is true. You gotta, you, you gotta do though. That's that's one. You 100%. gotta just do it. I mean, uh, that's why I said about riding a bike. Hmm. You can talk about it, read about it, <laughs> until you ride it. Until you ride <laughs> that bike. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Manju, what would you tell your younger self if you could go back in time and see the the kid that just came out of the University of Cardiff with a degree in engineering? What would you tell him? Mm, nothing. What? Really? 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 You wouldn't tell him anything? No. Why? Because that will spoil that person's experience. But but surely, Mr. Manju, like I mean, okay. So, for example, if if I'm fifty, right, which is twenty years from now, and I look back at the twenty-five year old, sorry, twenty-four year old, I could just finish the LSE. Um, I w- I would probably tell him look these are the things that you're going to face in life use these uh, have this mindset and maybe instead of reaching what you reached when you were 50 you might get them when you're 42 you might get them when you're 43 I might actually do that mm. right are you sure you wouldn't I wouldn't I I don't think that way so it doesn't make any sense to me no, but but why specifically Mr Manju I think everything I'm happy with how my life has been Ah, uh, uh, yeah, know, okay. And uh, whatever mistakes I did, or whatever so-called accomplishments that I did, I'm quite happy with both. Right. Uh, and I've been lucky that uh, my mistakes have not ended up um, uh, hurting others mm. in a in a in a non-recoverable way. Right. right. So I've been lucky there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm I'm quite. Uh, content with uh, how it's been and uh, i don't think i would like to go back and change anything or, uh, so so for you mr manju time is okay then so for example for me i i i'm fully aware that i'm most likely given sri lanka's excellent medical services um we we'll most likely have a life expectancy of around 80 most likely right which is a stark increase from like 100 years ago when it was around 50 or 60 um so assume it's 80 i've lived 30 which means it's 3 eighths of my life 37.5% um i have 52.5 well 62.5% of my life left i would say uh about 30 more years where my body is actually like able to do activities that i'd like to do um so assume i have another 30 years left um to actually really enjoy myself if i wanted to um and i don't know i, I would feel like if i could go back when i was 50 and then tell my younger self do these things i i might be able to enjoy certain activities in that 5 year that 4 5 year time frame that i would have saved otherwise to do some things that i never would have done otherwise i think while my body was able to enjoy it okay i think that's how i'd see it for myself i would not calculate what you have remaining that way <laughs> i would probably <laughs> advise you to think that you just only have a day and just go I mean, I mean yeah you're life, right yeah. I mean yeah you're right you can never know when we're actually going to die yeah. these are all assumptions so, on my part I mean, as well yeah. yeah you know I think it's 
rarely that things work out as you plan mm. but doesn't mean it's bad what the style of thinking no, right. no i mean i mean things not working out as you plan right doesn't mean it's a bad thing to happen mm. it can be a good thing maybe some you know who knows some pe- let's say you didn't plan on having certain people in your life uh, but they happen to come into your life right right maybe they are not, not a, it's not a bad thing right you may not have planned for it mm so there 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 are, there are many things i think you should look at don't look at you know you have 50 years more to go or whatever <laughs> and then plan <laughs> that's not uh, you know plan your calendar that's not how it works right right so do things when you can uh, that means physically as well as with your mind with your time and uh, what you can't do you can't do that that's okay <laughs> i mean i, I just, just don't want to have any regrets about. that's all just no regrets that's why do it. you want to have regrets for no, about what no no for example right like say i wanted to um, you know uh go canyoneering for example uh and my body is not able to do it when i'm like 70 but i could do it now but then i was too busy doing some other stuff which i found equally important right but then i was hoping that maybe i'd have the time later on in my life but then the later on in my life ended up being when i'm 70 and i couldn't enjoy myself i couldn't do it without getting severely injured in the process and then it just wouldn't be fun it wouldn't be why i wanted to do it in the first place and uh, i don't want to have any regrets like oh man i should have done this like when i was younger or whatever or maybe i should have cut this down to do uh, canyoneering at this stage in my life like i, I don't want to have those regrets that's why that's why that's why i think uh, that's why i think like ahead and do this analytical yeah but the analytic are not going to help you do the things right <laughs> you, i mean you do plan, what you, though, you, you, yeah but you do what you can yeah okay right you you can't have a like fruit juice water and soup at the same time no <laughs> you mix them all together all right <laughs> mix them all but together the experience will be very different to what what you are, <laughs> what you're hoping to have so uh, you know do what you can if you, whatever you miss out on mm-hmm. so wait so what because you missed it out because of some reason for example if you went to do that then some you will miss out on something else so th- i guess y- no? yeah so just uh, that's the way it goes i guess you're right mr manju yeah, don't I have regrets like that that's it's uh, it's not worth your while right i feel you and uh, based on something you just brought up right about um, the people that come into your life um how would you deal with having certain people in your life at certain pockets of time and then not having them at other pockets in your life like how would you how would you kind of deal with that situation uh meaning yeah why, again, why? I, i'll ask that again so okay. sorry I'll, i'll rephrase that seem confusing as well um so basically you have certain people in your life at this stage and and you know you learn a lot from them and you you experience life together it doesn't always be good sometimes it's bad and um, eventually comes to a point in time where you realize that you are going one way and they either refuse to go that way or they're going another way and you kind of have to part ways despite the friendship that you've had with them despite despite the experiences that you have had with them it could have even been 20 years it could have been many years it could have been a few months but those months were intense yeah and you feel like you really got to know them it, how 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 would you kind of deal with that separation well i would just thinking uh, i would just think of it as you know change change is always happening right and people around you change as well so do you and it's just part of the process so uh, you know let's say one of your relatives or your parents sometimes they may pass away or you could have a friend who's been with you for a long time who may part ways due to various reasons yeah doesn't mean they won't come back mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but uh, it's not something i think you should dwell on a lot but uh, take use the opportunity to reconnect whenever possible without dwelling on the bad thing. but sometimes it's a difficult thing to do based on you know how things went down when it went down how do you kind of yeah but true but then, then uh, just reset and move forward i've done done it many times 
Was it easy for you, Mr. Manju? Ah, uh, well, it's not something that I don't know how to answer that, but I had to. I had a lot of practice uh, with this situation with my family, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I guess it was in my nature to be able to do that. So it didn't take a big effort to do it. Okay, so say if it wasn't in your nature, how how what what are the steps you'd recommend? I I would say that don't judge others or assume that they would think like you. We all think a little differently, and right. we are not in somebody else's shoes. We cannot be. So we don't know the pressures that someone may have, and how that. No, for example, let's say you have peer peer pressure, right? right? You might not feel too much of it, hmm. but someone else, to someone else, it might be a huge deal, right? right. Similarly, something that may be a really, really um, something really important to you may not be that important to someone else, right? right? So, if you look at uh, who you're close to in that way. then you accept them for what they are not for what you wish that they would have been or they could be or something like this mm. so then those uh, differences don't become that important i see i see that's a fair point actually mr manju but okay how do you separate this mr manju so say for example um they try to ruin your reputation then what do you do see see it's not is is not it's just not ideological differences it's not that like that you can understand that you can explain away that you can uh be okay with but what if they try to ruin your reputation by false by by spreading falsehoods about you well it's happened to me several times and how uh, and how do you combat it well i try to correct it wherever possible in like uh, some like how how much do you normally your reputation is based on third parties no right mm. so wherever possible i may attempt to correct it uh, to those parties but sometimes you are successful in overcoming it some com- sometimes you are not it's like uh, when something goes on social media or in the newspapers right uh, you know when, when things go in newspaper or social media it may or may not be the truth but so- sometimes this is very little you can do about it I can remember many years ago. Uh, uh, I had a call from my parents, uh, not in Sri Lanka at that time, but uh, I had a call from one of my uncles and asking me if uh, one particular or two weeks before that call, whether I had met with an accident uh, in a lockdown and whether I had killed this person. Right? <laughs> I was wondering yeah, what. The, what what this is yeah. right and i asked him why 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 are you asking me this right he said no no i went for this funeral this older gentleman who had passed away uh, by getting knocked down at a pedestrian right and the wife of that older gentleman mentioned that it was so and so who had driven the car mini me <laughs> right they actually they had mentioned my grandparents from both my pa- parents sides they are well known right and said that so and so's grandchild is the one who did this mm-hmm. and also mentioned the place where i used to stay so, yo that's crazy yeah so this mind you this is in the at the funeral uh, at the funeral yes that's how he had gone to the funeral and that's how he had heard so then uh, i was wondering what and then later on i discovered i was at one of my other uncles homes that day and uh, when we investigated it further <laughs> we found that uh, uh, it was a person who used to rent a, one of our houses uh, and because of the location they had put two and two together right right and right. i had a little bit of a sort of a a uh, little bit of a notorious not notorious but a, a <laughs> wild reputation much more playboy <laughs> <laughs> not really a playboy but anyway i had a bit of a radical or wild reputation and uh, 
they came up with my name wow that's crazy so in those sort of situations would you go and doubt what was being said uh, as an outsider no you wouldn't but what what can you do about it i i mean i i don't know how to answer that question exactly i, I, so I, I think i think as a 20 year old i i think 25 year old me would have actually uh, judged you then and there uh, maybe even 28 year old me but i think 30 year old me would be a bit more calm and be like hmm let's see let's actually look through all the pieces of evidence and come to a conclusion like logically yeah, but normally 99.9% of the people won't have time to do it and, and yeah, we, it's true. we cannot <laughs> cannot expect them to do that either mm. so we should not blame them for the the uh, them thinking it is me or something like that you know? right uh, they may not come and ask me directly unless they were very close to me Mm-hmm. but they might be they will probably talk about it or they will keep it in the back of their mind so one of those things <laughs> it's absolutely uh, crazy <laughs> so how did you get over it mr manju like as in, as in like like how uh, how did you like prove innocence and like all of that uh, there nothing to prove i i, was, I mean obviously the police well, charge of, of course police did, charge somebody else of course else. You, you you did nothing you did yeah. nothing of course but yeah. like how, like how did you like you know get out of the situation I didn't <laughs> nothing <laughs> no, there was nothing I could do and I, I of course I mentioned it to my uncle and all that and that was fine but obviously there was a lot of people at the funeral right and word generally spreads pretty fast so there was really nothing much I could do about it so I just let it be <laughs> and things <laughs> things worked out in your favor that's that's <laughs> I don't know whether it worked out in my favor or not but you know no, I mean you didn't go to jail I mean that, no, that, of course they, I was not the one who was charged the police no, no, knew I, the no, person no, no, but no no of course of course but what I mean is like if people were saying it like if enough and more people were saying it mm. it it might have even come become a mob thing and then you know, like a mob mentality thing and then they would have put you in jail until someone would have been like uh, uh, no, 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 no they, the it. police knew the uh, they had already apprehended the person ah right okay they, okay, they right, had right. apprehended the person yeah. but they associated that person as being me exactly yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly. so uh, so that was when you know social media was non existent yeah so uh, i mean if, if social media moment, was existent of course you you you'd be exonerated within a few minutes not uh, really i think so because i mean there's enough evidence for you to be like yo guys this is the truth this is what happened here i was here right here's the proof you can see me with this girl over here at this time <laughs> <laughs> right so like it's obviously it's not me and then you're exonerated from there right well sometimes if you're lucky yes but let's say you were just somewhere where there wasn't anyone then what yeah then you're in trouble yeah there <laughs> then you you're go. in trouble Now, for example uh, let's say you, you use uh, a smartphone right mm-hmm. and uh, maybe the location is on or whatever it is but you know i only use this i don't have a smartphone yeah that's crazy yeah, mr right? manju like like why it's <laughs> why because it suits my lifestyle it's very simple I mean you're lucky you found this place. <laughs> you found you you found the studio just fine, yeah. right? <laughs> but okay, there's a there's like a massive landmark up the road so like it's pretty obvious from there but like but like say I didn't have like a massive landmark up the road then how would you have found like the studio? There's always a way I know life existed before smartphones before uh, all this technology. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm against technology but I mean you're an engineer you can't be against technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh there are i mean i, I even have uh, i think uh, a few patents that uh, used uh, worldwide so one one of them is on uh, based on a smartphone as a, or a phone uh, how long ago did you log that in like 15 20 10 uh it was the time where where these phones were popular and the flip phone was popular oh okay okay, and, okay. Uh, the issue was those days um, i don't know whether the camera can see this but Oh sorry the, the keypad is here no? so yeah. when you although you take a call like this mm-hmm. to hold the phone when you want to do a, send a text or something is very difficult right so you normally do this which is a little unstable or use this so the patent was really you put the keyboard above the screen you put the keyboard above yeah, the so screen yeah so it's much easier to use Yo, so you it's don't like an get up, yeah you don't get down yeah, phone you don't Yo, get a greasy crazy. screen either because your ear doesn't get on the screen so uh, so how would you use the phone then if it's not on speaker sorry so how would you how would you have used this phone if it wasn't on speaker like say you wanted to take a phone call like how would you have done it see it's just the keyboard above the screen so the this 
yeah yeah pc is here the mic is here so, so so there wouldn't be there wouldn't be any like discomfort with the with the with the keypad like on your ear or anything nothing like that based on the design of course yeah and the flip pass are the same way so ah i see i see fast it's sold to uh, through a third party and a company in denmark actually built the phone so this was during the nokia days yes ah. uh, it does i think uh, bang and olivsen uh, made the phone call serene mobile for many and many years ago Yo, that's 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 awesome. So, like, uh, one of your one of your patents was used. Yes, that's awesome, man. That that's that 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 makes me happy. That <laughs> to hear those kind of things is awesome. Like, when you hear, like, honestly, Mister Manjula, when when I hear that, like, Sri Lankans have done things that have, that I have think there are so many Sri Lankans who have done brilliant stuff. No, no, I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is, like, it it always makes me really happy when I hear that Sri Lankans from around the world have done these incredible things, like these incredible innovations, that, or they've come up with something or the other. it it really it really warms me up it, it really makes me happy cuz like i'm so glad that our guys i have i like that there's proof there's testament and proof beyond beyond just like you know our like forefathers and how they built sigiria and the dam that goes where the water shoots upwards which no one has been able to replicate to this day you know like like just fascinating things that our people have done right even from back then and even when our guys still do things now i'm it it just makes me so happy it like makes me proud i can't really explain it per se Uh, do you know about that, Mr. Manju? Like there, there, there are dams in Sri Lanka where the water shoots upwards, up like mountains and stuff, that like our forefathers have built. Yes, yeah. The irrigation system actually it was very advanced, uh, and even now there are a lot of Sri Lankans who are contributing to many things worldwide. Uh, although we don't hear about them, but I mean, uh, even if you take a person like Dr. Kulasinga, who pioneered uh, precast concrete. But really, he did, he did most of his work in Malaysia, and other. He even even made concrete uh, barges. Oh, how many uh, years ago was this? I think he passed away about uh, maybe twenty years ago. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. That's awesome. Uh, though. That's so awesome. Amazing guy. Uh, so most of the highways, flyovers, all those are using his technology. As in around the world? Or yeah, around the world. Around Whoa! The world. So. like that there are so many uh, so many i i have about 30 35 uh, innovations being used to all right <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, and here you are being so humble and chill over here like in sri lanka just talking about life and philosophy and all that stuff mean about the 35 patents or no no it's not it's not that it's just that uh, uh, there are brilliant people in our country and uh, the, in in the past as well as currently yeah uh, i'm really proud of that we we, we don't really hear about them sometimes a, a lot of the shame. work it's a work shame he's been done in different countries now recently i saw this uh, lady uh, who was producing a, a covid test uh, by blowing into a balloon you said that harvard girl no right uh, yes she was from the us but she was she's from sri lanka she uh, gave a interview Uh, which is the one who learned how to code in 2 days or something is that her? in about 15 seconds you can get the result really yes it's wow. like a breathalyzer balloon something like that yo that's amazing so amazing uh, so uh, there are so many uh, actually for this pandemic uh, around about 2017 uh, i co-authored a paper uh, ah, yes, this is fascinating yeah let's talk about this one this is, this is actually uh, this is awesome this is awesome guys listen to this uh, one uh, well uh, predicting Uh, a pandemic happening in this period it's based on uh, uh, we looked at the historical pandemic cycle on earth mm-hmm. and looked at the sunspot cycle uh, this is over the past uh, over the past how many years a oh, century a uh, few centuries and uh, if you look at the sunspot cycle you know what sunspots are right uh, i i i do miss manju but just in case yes well if you you can see to your naked eye also there are like you can see black spots on the surface of the sun and there are intense uh, magnetic fields so periodically the number of spots increase and they decrease and we found that when the spots are decreased that means when it's at a minima uh the pandemic cycle on earth peaks this <laughs> crazy right? and uh, <laughs> uh, also we found that historically even before our travel that the pandemics have occurred in different parts of the world almost at the same time so it couldn't have been where it through human to human transmission it spread to other countries 
it would have human to human transmission would have happened but probably it receded so what what we believe or the hypothesis was that uh, in on interstellar dust uh, you get virons coming through and during a sunspot minima more of them come come through to earth and during a when the sunspots are at uh, maxima more of them get drawn towards the sun so that was the hypothesis and the heading of the paper was a case for vigilance pandemics on earth right <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, the peak the one of the deepest minimas happened uh, late 2019 Yo, that's nice. Sunspot cycle 25 it's it's there on research gate you can have a read yeah read that's, that's, that's uh, read crazy. on it but um, uh, so but are the virons so are the virons actually like uh, displaced uniformly across the earth or is it like like in certain pockets where like no it's like seeding like you get a meteor shower something like that so okay. it, it comes in all the time but depends on the load if the load increases then yes right It's fascinating. So we have even found um, uh, we did some work on meteorites mm-hmm. and uh, embedded inside some of the meteorites uh, uh, myself and uh, some other professors also uh, discovered some uh, fossilized diatoms. So diatoms Mr. Manju. Yes. Like single cell uh, uh, creatures but they were fossils of single cell creatures inside the meteorite or just below the surface so basically life outside of earth probably is the prediction basically. probably yes so i mean there are many many uh, uh, people who have been working on this uh, matters like professor chandra vikraval singh uh, he's a world famous astrophysicist or astrobiologist uh, i mean uh, sir fred hoyle uh, so there are many people so even uh, like you said Sri Lankans uh, yeah. who, are, who are at the cutting edge of uh, discovery. Honestly, I, I'm here smiling because like it, it means a lot to see it. Like it, 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 it's an awesome feeling to know that our people are like, you know, like just as badass as we were like, you know, centuries ago. It's, it's, it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome feeling. It is. It is. It, I, I mean, our people are really, really good and intelligent. Uh, sometimes when you have people who are... individuals intelligent and uh, fairly um, in a crisis the excellent i think so it's true right. I, i but I, i think that same uh, uh, characteristics make them difficult to govern it's fascinating so well, what's your take on that mr wanju well to uh, if you look at countries uh, that are so called more advanced in money terms yeah or power terms you would they would need uh, either slaves or slave countries <laughs> or somebody they can control right. to to supply them mm-hmm. so earlier maybe they bought in people or slaves to their own countries later on they went and grabbed other countries and you know made them do the <laughs> dirty work yeah, yeah. Uh, so similarly with, with you can do that with uh, people who don't ask too many questions and who right. do as they are told mm-hmm. uh, but it's not very easy to do that with people who don't have that mindset but the thing is we got conquered three times over right no we can get conquered but we, to develop our country right you need Uh, uh, a vision and also a set of people who do as they're told follow the process right right i so see what you're saying okay, okay here normally if you put a process people figure out a way of jumping out of it <laughs> shortcutting it <laughs> this is so true yeah, it, it we is are, good we are, we are masters of yeah, this kind of thing like for example when the tsunami hit uh, the brilliance of our people came into fore no i mean how they coped with it and recovered so quickly and helped mm. each other but if you take a similar or a very very smaller thing like hurricane katrina in the us i think uh, it took 
many many years even to even to uh, get past those uh, incidents because people rely on the system there here people don't have faith in the system say so this just go just go to whatever they want to do right it's like at a traffic light if the traffic lights don't work we still we are still okay no problem yeah yeah right. we, we, we know how to we know how to maneuver we are meander we are on the traffic and even if it works is there they still try to <laughs> they still try this thing this is so true so it, it 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 has a plus and a minus uh, but uh, maybe the younger generation with uh, a more environmental thinking coming into the fore will make the governance also change reflect that i think so mr manju yeah. but i also think that the younger generation that's like me and below 35 year olds and below whatever it is that constitutes the younger generation i i really feel that on social media we should be a bit more active on the things that really matter uh not just random things that not not like you know we call it character of the day moments uh which is basically like in a tv show uh you get like you know one episode where a certain problem occurs but it's not the overarching problem of the entire season it's just a problem for the day that doesn't really have a big significance over the long term of the series or even the season or whatever it is right so a lot of people on social media they kind of talk about the character of the day moment right it's just like a here and now very small thing that doesn't really matter one month or two months from now and the and the and the larger problems at hand you know are not are not really uh, focused on for example like we were talking about kindness and all of this and uh, uh what i'd like to say is for example why is it that um you know okay so this <laughs> this, this might be a bit controversial and i was planning on talking about this on a, a separate podcast with another one of my economics friends but um but for example why is it that people are paid so little in sri lanka yeah so actually mr manju what do you think uh why why do you like one of the reasons as to you know all this stuff right like our guys are, are brilliant and they always come up with these crazy shortcuts and incredible mindsets and all of that but the thing is our guys are not adequately compensated in sri lanka which is why they go to find uh, adequately compensated for the lifestyles that they want to live is the right way of is the way that i would say it right uh, and which is why they go abroad uh, for to find a life to find compensation or to find a life where they can actually live the lifestyle that they dream of having right now for example I, it could be that i want that my lifestyle is 50000 rupees a month it could be that yours is 10000 rupees a month it could be that the guy next door is a million rupees a month mm-hmm. right as long as i'm making like at least 50000 i can live my life as long as you're making at least i don't know 15000 you're living your life if the guy who wants 1 million rupees is only making 500000 right that man doesn't want to live in sri lanka anymore he's going abroad right um so <sighs> how is it like like one one of the, like this is an overarching philosophical question but there's obviously economic implications behind it and um, and this is something that i'm currently working on and trying to figure out the answer to uh but how would like what what's your take on that kind of scenario mr manju in terms of finding finding adequate pay in sri lanka for what you want to live like the lifestyle that you want to have okay i think uh, my advice uh, which i give to some of the leaders of the companies that i work with yeah um uh, is try to encourage uh, solution providers meaning pay them well and you don't have to have many <laughs> you know they say they say for example yeah, recently a recent a few days ago i was told that a particular company a manufacturing company had uh, they were running but uh, they had uh, uh, 65% absenteeism 65% percent because Yo. of this covid uh, situation and various things like that right so my my first uh, this thing was so oh, okay that means they are overstaffed because if they are running without 65% of the mm. workforce mm. probably you can pay a lesser number of people double and have a much better operation than having uh, the number that they have right but uh, normally in 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 companies the leaders generally think that they have the answers to everything <laughs> and uh, most of them try to micromanage i think this is the biggest problem this is one of the biggest problems and they don't build teams they don't build uh, 
uh, or encourage solution providers. Mm. Right. Uh, there are a few that do, uh, that do, but mm-hmm. in the majority don't. I think a lot so, of the approval companies do, like your MSOs and them are very strong when it comes to well, building solution providers. Yeah. Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> but th- that way, you encourage people who are productive mm-hmm. and they get compensated for that value. Yeah. Uh, there's no point having, you know, people just do as they're told, I go here, jump up, do this, do that. Uh, that is ne- uh, <laughs> I never going to work. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, so I think there is a poem also uh, written by Adams, which, which says something of that nature. Mm. I will email it to you, but it uh, skips my mind. So no, no it's cool. Uh, like honestly, I wanted to talk about poetry today, but uh, uh, it'll have to be for next time. But. Uh, uh, but what, what I wanted to say was, there's so much beauty. I have a small gift for you, Anok. You do? Yes, I do. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Would you like to have it? But be careful. Sure, sure, sure. Go for it, go for it. Okay. There you go. What? Wait, isn't this, isn't this like glass? It can be what you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, knowing how clumsy I am, I'll probably cut myself on this. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep it on the side here. Yeah. <laughs> But no, you, you, you can depends on how you look at it. You can look it, look at it for what it was. Think about what it was. Okay. You can think about what it can be. Maybe part of a creative solution, or you can think of it something that you might not really see, but you can touch. But maybe at certain angles, you might see it. <laughs> you might also look at it that if you don't know how to handle it. You might get hurt. I think that's probably the one that's going to happen to me. (laughs) So I hope it inspires you and uh, sort of uh, lets you think about certain things that you discussed with me. Like, like guys, guys, by the way, this is normal with Mr. Manju. He he does things like this all the time. He'll like give me some completely random present and then like give some really philosophical like discussion and some explanation as to what it means. And then I'm just like staring there like a complete monkey going, ha, huh, that makes sense actually. <laughs> I heard you were writing a poem. I am, Mr. Yes. Manju. I so am. would you like to share that with us? No? Uh, not right now because... Okay, say, say a few, one or two words of it. That's the thing though, right? Because It doesn't you know, matter. It need not be complete. Okay. Share what you have now. Uh, no, no. So, so what, I, what, what, I, what, I, what I will talk about is the fact that um, uh, a lot of my friends actually asked me, uh, you know, how are, things, how are things going with you now that you're 30? And for the first time in my life, I actually felt like something was missing in my life. You know, in my 20s, I never felt like anything was missing. I, you know, I was very happy with how, how my life was going and stuff. But now I just feel like I'm missing things. Something's missing in my life and I can't really put my finger on what it is. So I decided to turn to poetry to kind of, uh, to help me understand my emotions. And I'm just writing it all out. Unfortunately, today we don't have the time to talk about it, Mr. Manju, because we are out of time and as Polymat Blue sits in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anuk. No, 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 no. Uh, no but no. Uh, I think you should really not skip it and say a few words of uh, one or two lines of your poem. Next time, Mr. Manju. No, 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 this no, no, time. No, 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 no. We, we have run out of time. <laughs> I timed this perfectly so that this, 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 this shows up right at the end so like I don't have to do anything. I timed it beautifully. <laughs> uh, Mr. Manju, thank you so much for being here. As always, it's an absolute pleasure having you. Thank you so much, Mr. Manju. Uh, Mr. Manju, how do people reach you? Well, uh, why would they want to reach me? So basically, they don't reach you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm on email and uh, I'm really not on social media as much. So Uh, what's your email, Mr. Manju? If you want to share it, of course. Yeah, it's manjuf at uh, gmail.com. M-A-N-J-U-F for Fernando at uh, gmail.com. Awesome. So that's how you reach Mr. Manju, guys. Guys, thank you so much for being uh, with us for this episode. Again, guys, if you want to reach out to me, if you want to, uh, the links are all in the description below. Uh, if you want to be on the podcast, let me know, guys. Uh, just hit me up on Instagram or Twitter, whatever it is. Just hit me up, uh, even on the comments here, whatever it is. Hit me up and let me know. Uh, I'd love to have you guys. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for being, uh, for watching us. And thank you so much, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. 
Uh, Mr. Manju, thank you so much. Last thank time. you very much, Anok. It was wonderful <laughs> to have been here. Thank you, Mr. Manju. And guys, with that, I'm off, guys. See you, guys. Bye, bye.